What is going on, folk? My name is Nimblethor, and welcome back to my mobile gaming quest, where today we are finally playing Dawn of Isles. I know I should have done a video on this game months ago, at least weeks ago, and I believe I actually promised some of you guys that as well, and I'm sorry, but I just haven't been able to make up my mind about this game. It is a great game, it truly is, but for some reason it just hasn't been able to hook me so much that I haven't been able to put it down for the past few weeks. So I actually haven't played this game as much as I wanted to, but I wanted to make this video regardless though, because you guys keep asking, and I feel bad about not making the video, so here it is. At the end of the day though, this game is of course amazing. In case this is the first you hear of the game, by the way, Dawn of Isles is a new, beautiful MMORPG with a few survival gameplay elements as well, and it has been developed by NetEase. The world in this game is just stunning and I think it will very positively surprise many of you guys if you haven't played it yet. It is truly really unlike anything I've seen on mobile so far, so definitely a huge plus on the world design and just the look of the game overall. It looks great, the UI is well made as well, and although it might be a bit cluttered, it's far from as bad as in some mobile MMORPGs, and it's easy to get to the things that we actually don't want to get to, such as the quests for example, the map, our inventory, and so on. Sorry, it's called backpack in this game, not inventory. But it's easy to get to all of those things whenever we want to get to them, and that's, I think, a sign of a well-designed UI and UX system. Unlike most MMORPGs, we also have a hotbar in the bottom of the screen, as you guys can see, and then from that hotbar, we can switch between any of our different harvesting tools or whatever else we really decide to place there. And that is pretty nice. I like having that hotbar there. It really comes in handy much more than I thought it would. Now, in some games, we, of course, have a skill bar down at the bottom of the screen. That's not too uncommon, but a hotbar... I haven't seen that very often in a mobile game, I gotta admit. Now, one of the best things about this game, though, is how well the controls actually feel. The left side joystick is very responsive, and attacking, even just with our normal attacks, just feels amazing in this game. I truly feel like a powerful archer when playing Dawn of Files, and that's one of those experiences that very few other MMORPGs on mobile has offered me so far. Now, the few things I dislike about Dawn of Files is that the NPC conversations and all of these cutscenes that we're going through right now, they have not been translated to English. All text is in English, but the voiceover isn't, which is kind of unfortunate. And secondly, the classes are gender locked as well. I always hate that. It's mildly frustrating as well. Uh, and it does take away some of the immersiveness of playing this game. I do think the game has cut a very nice balance between manual and auto gameplay, though, as we can run to quests either manually or automatically, but you will definitely want to fight manually. And the combat system just feels amazing as well. Let's see if we can find some monsters somewhere and try to actually fight them, maybe, if we run over here. We have a few different abilities that we can use, and those abilities can even be mixed to cause extra effects, such as, for example, if we have a water ability, then we can add wind on top of that to create sort of a whirlwind that has water in it, and that I found kind of cool as well. Oh, there's a monster over here. Let's start attacking it, and let's use some of our abilities. There you go, we hit it with the whirlwind, and now the water ability as well. Oh, and we already defeated it. And actually, once we defeat an enemy, we can skin it as well, and I always forget that, but you should definitely remember to do that. Now, what I like about the combat system is, of course, that we actually have to aim our abilities at the enemies that we want to hit. So, for example, this is just like in a mobile. So, for example, if we start attacking this enemy up here, and I want to use this attack, as you guys can see, I can move around right now. The right side of the screen turns into a joystick as well, and we can then release to actually hit the enemy. This looks like a pretty big monster up here. Can we attack that one? That would be so cool. The big belly guy up here. Oh, wait, he's an NPC. For a second there, I was really hoping that he would be some sort of boss monster that we had stumbled into and we had the opportunity to kill now. But yeah, that's what I really like about the combat system. It feels very nice. It feels more mobile-like, and I'm quite liking that. Now, in addition to the open world that we were roaming just before, we also have our own private island, which is where the survival elements really come into play. On this island, we develop different workshops, we can craft items, and so on. And we actually went there right now, so you guys can see our little crop field over here. I do believe we have some plants that are ready to be harvested. Let's go up to these fellas up here and collect some cabbage. What do we have here? We have some mushroom, that's cool as well. And we've got pumpkins as well. So these items we can either eat or I presume we can use them for crafting somehow. What about this one here? Uh, restore 600 SP instantly. What about some of the ones we just collected? Let's see if we can find them anywhere. Here they are, materials. Yes, used to make salad and stewed fish soup food. Such as, I guess, for example, this over here, Islander jerky or maybe, maybe Islander candy. 
some of these salads, at least I believe we should be able to make from these different types of crops that we've now collected. So all of these elements where we have our own island and we have to plant seeds and then we have to water those seeds and then we can craft items and so on. These are typically elements that we see mostly in survival games, but it's very interesting to play a game where those elements have actually been integrated into a otherwise very MMORPG, very typical MMORPG gameplay experience. So if that's something that you guys are into, then I definitely think you should go give this game a go as it's one of the very few MMORPG games that actually mixes in survival elements as well. So anyway, I believe we finished this quest now. That's pretty awesome. And look at this, there's even a map where we can see all the other players and their islands. Our island, of course, is called Valhalla because what else? I am Nimble Thor after all. And if we wanted to, we could now actually go visit some of these homes as well. I am not gonna do that right now. I wanna go back to some questing instead. But, you know, if we wanted to, we could do that. So that means you can go visit your friends as well. And that's, of course, a very nice social element to the game. Now, as for the monetization, people who have played this game much more than I have are telling me that there is no pay to win element in this game at the moment. And that the game is very fair, even at higher levels. And frankly, I think what just amazes me overall about this game is that it feels so fresh and so different from most other MMORPGs out there. So it's a very easy recommendation just because of that fact in and of itself. Now as for whether or not we'll see pay to win elements added to this game late on, that's anyone's guess at this point of course. But NetEase generally tend to monetize their games in a somewhat fair way, so I wouldn't be too worried about that, honestly. And for now, the game can definitely be enjoyed, regardless of what they're gonna do in the future. Now, even though I'm not gonna be able to show you all of this game's features in just this one single video, I do wanna say here at the end that yes, we do have parties, yes, there is PvP as well, and yes, there are dungeons as well. So there's a ton to explore and get into if you wanna take this game for a spin on your own. But these are, of course, all just my personal opinions. I can't wait to hear what you guys actually think about Dawn of Files in the comment section down below. I'm sure that some of you are still playing this game. I'm also pretty certain that some of you have played the game, decided to stop playing the game, and it would be really interesting to hear why you actually quit the game, I think, because maybe that will help other people figure out if they should download the game for themselves and really spend the amount of hours required to really dig into the game. So let's get that going in the comment section. And with that said, let's now get to the mobile gaming news of the day, which is that Armor Games has released a new game called Void Tyrant on iOS with an Android version coming very soon as well. Now, what's so interesting about that, you might ask? Well, listen up, the game is, and hold on now, a roguelike inspired by Blackjack. And yes, you heard that right, it's quite literally inspired by the casino game Blackjack. Sounds pretty horrible on paper, but I saw a few videos on this game and it looks super fun. And so you can count me in so far. I will be playing this game as soon as I can. And if you're interested, you can download it now already if you're on iOS. And if you do, be sure to let me know what you think about the game already in the comment section down below. I'm always in favor of new game ideas. So I'm very positive that this game will be a fun one. And then of course, we'll just have to wait and see if it actually gets ruined by the monetization. Now that's all for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did subscribe if you're new around here and you like mobile games. And most importantly, until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around. Oh, 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 oh,